With Throne for a Loss, one could be forgiven for believing that Farscape, the original series, centers on Rigel. Similar to the previous two episodes, Rigel's ability or inability to act takes center stage. I should be tall. It's tall enough already. I need them to look up to me. Why? We don't. This time, though, he gets taken down a peg. Our supreme eminence has been bagged. Rigel needs to be rescued, and in the process we learn more about him and how he thinks and feels. As the title indicates, Throne for a Loss centers on Rigel, but the episode also gives us key insights into Dargo and Zan. We have already learned that Dargo is gruff, easy to anger, and not as good of a warrior as he wants to be. Now we see angry Dargo on steroids, literally. Yes, the gauntlet, which injects the wearer with a drug. You're too weak to handle it. Why? What is that stuff it pumps in you? A stimulant. Adds to our strength. A stimulant? It's a little more than cappuccino, pal. Our friend just tried to kill us. Good. <laughs> How do we remove it? You can't. It doesn't make Dargo a more effective warrior. Or Aaron, for that matter. Or even Crichton. But the gauntlet does kind of help them to rescue Rigel, though not without side effects. I hate this. Does your head hurt? Yes. Yours? Pounding like a Maxillian Palater Day Parade. I'm, I'm so tired. I... That scene is a continuation of the tree scene in IET two episodes earlier. Crichton should be back by now. Well, he's probably at the wrong end of some Tavlik weapon somewhere. <laughs> Imagine, somewhere out there, there's a whole world full of Crichtons. How useless that must be. It's amazing he could actually provide us with some common ground. <laughs> Who would have thought there'd be a race more clumsy and pathetic than the Luxons? Ow! I'm sorry. You know how clumsy we Luxons can be. Score one for Dargo. Anyway. They are on the planet to rescue Rigel, who has been kidnapped by the Tavloids. Tavlex. For ransom. We get to see Rigel truly out of his element, his remonstrances fairly useless. I demand to speak to the Creosh in charge. I will not be treated like this. How dare you bury me in mud? Are you listening? You're nothing but barbarians. Don't you know this is an act of war? When my council hears of this, the Hymerian navy will scorch this hellhole! <sighs> that should get him thinking. We get to meet an interesting alien in Jotheb, who we regrettably never see or hear from again. We see Rigel killed by the leader of the Tavlex, but we get to see Rigel get his ultimate humiliation and a cheap revenge. Rigel, you are welcomed into the consortium of Trow. Oh, yes. Well, thank you for the invitation, but I... It is I'm... not an invitation. You were killed by Beckish and revived by me. You are therefore owned by me, as are your subjects. Is that so? <laughs> you multi-throated moron! Many <laughs> subjects! I was deposed over a hundred cycles ago! My traitorous bastard of a cousin stole my throne and imprisoned me! I escaped with a few of the fugitives and they're the only ones who even know I'm here! <laughs> What's that? You're absolute. They couldn't if they wanted to. And they don't want to because they hate me. <laughs> then you will die here. So why are you laughing? Of course, they rescue Rigel eventually. Well, Crichton does, because the early episodes established Crichton as the savior of the others. That rescue leads to one of my favorite scenes. <coughs> Where's the you know what? I knew you wouldn't come back just for me. What did you do with it? It's safe and sound. Did you swallow it? Swallow it? Yes, yes. Which means you're gonna have to take me back as I am, or disembowel me here. 
don't you tempt me, Fluffy. Which is notable for the first time Crichton gives Rigel a nickname. So, okay, planet side, Dargo and Aaron can't rescue Rigel, but Crichton does. The revealing action, though, is back on Moya, where the Tavlex have left behind young Kerr, and Zan tries to save him. Kerr doesn't want to be saved. That stimulant in your gauntlet, it must have been extremely addictive. But once your body purifies, the hunger for the drug should pass. But I don't need a damn sermon! I didn't ask for your help, so keep your speeches to yourself. But the point of all of this is to reveal more of who Zan is and what she can do. Zan is a healer priest, confident and strong. Ugh, I'm not afraid of you. You're soft and weak. Zan? Yes? <laughs> Soft, yes. Weak, no. We see that Zan is soft, kind, a true healer, and a helper. But we also get our first glimpse that there is something darker within her. Give that to me. I need it! Give it to me! Is this the way you repay my help? How would you like your arm torn off? <laughs> you don't scare me. You don't even have the guts to fight me! Him. I could rip you apart right now, Carl, and help me. I'd enjoy it. But you know why I don't? Because we're not enemies. This is your enemy. Contemplate that in solitude. We see more of that dark side in future episodes. Farscape reminds us that not all good deeds are rewarded, because paradoxically, people have free will to deny their own freedom. In some respects, this is another simple episode, but it sets up much to come. What we learn in this episode. The Tavleks are introduced, but we learn little about them. We do not even know if Tavlex refers to a group of people or a whole species. They are bandits who thrive on theft and kidnapping for ransom. They rely on a weapon attached to their forearms, referred to as the gauntlet, that has three functions. It is a weapon that shoots an energy pulse, it has shielding from other weaponry, and it injects a stimulant drug into the bloodstream of the wearer. Bakesh demands Corvinium as the ransom for Rigel. It is never explained what it is, and it is never mentioned again in the entire Farscape series. Aaron mentions using a Pantech jab on Crichton. The word Pantech occurs only one other time in the original series to describe a class of Peacekeeper spaceship. We also do not know what a Garantas Brax is, except Rigel doesn't give one. Probably the Hynerian equivalent of a rat's ass. Moya's synaptic processors are, quote, trillions of silicon neurons suspended in a semi-organic crystalline matrix. Do with that what you will. Dargo says his head is pounding like a Maxillian Politer Day Parade. Your guess is as good as mine. Luxons, when they're wounded, bleed dark red, almost black blood, and they can die from this unless the wound is cleansed until the blood flows clear. Erin knows that she has to open the wound until the blood flows clear or else Dargo will die. We learn that Rigel is an obnoxious gas bag. Well, you probably already figured that out. But we learn that Rigel is aware that he is isolated and friendless in the universe. Not that he takes any steps to remedy this, but we see our glimpse of how vulnerable Rigel is. Ponderables. The Tablex are the first space-faring race met by the inhabitants of Moya other than the Peacekeepers. And our heroes do not fare well in the encounter. They do not yet know how to work together, and Crichton has to fill in the void by acting the leader. Once again, Dargo is quickly disarmed and subdued in the opening scene, continuing the pattern that he is not a very good warrior. Dargo threatens to rip off all of Pilot's arms, a foreshadowing of, well, we'll get to that episode later. It is rather amazing how often Aaron and Crichton end up falling onto each other in these early episodes. 
Claudia Black on the DVD commentary takes to calling out proximity alert when it so often happens. I wish I could give a proximity alert to the next uh, deep dive, which would be episode five, but that will come with time when I have the time, and you can make me make more time for these by donating to support the Farscape Continues project. Click on the Ko-Fi link in the description of the video below. Give a few dollars to keep me motivated and going on this. Thank you so much for listening, watching, and keep the faith.